Uh, Stellar Technologies is a data networks innovator, driving end-to-end -end hyperscale data network solutions. Um, we drive innovations and network solutions for four key global customer segments, uh, telcos, cloud companies, large enterprises, and citizen networks. So that's a brief of what we do. Uh, my role at Stellar Technologies is a very interesting one. Um, so I joined the organization in May 2017 uh, as a Chief Transformation Officer. This is not a title you would hear uh, mostly. Um, so the role is uh, uh, encompassing process transformation, uh, information technology, the entire data science and data management, and a whole bit about strategy execution. Um, today my role um, uh, is very uh, interesting because I generally don't know what I'm going to do the next day. It's, uh, it's got that level of ambiguity in it. Um, I am a thought partner to all the CXOs in the organization and in fact to the entire talent in the organization. Uh, idea is to have a lot of organic frameworks which will make our company more agile, work better, faster, have uh, much more repeatability to set it up for scale, to handle complexity. Um, so that's the kind of role I play. Uh, quite a few of them actually. Um, so like I said, we started in May 2017. So the first innovation I think was in the way we even set up the transformation framework in the organizations. Uh, these days many companies talk about transformation but probably they sometimes end up starting on a wrong foot. Uh, so here we went all by first principle design, uh, setting up you know, the, the charter of what transformation means, what will be the org design, what will be the role play of various people in the company, uh, looking at the heat map, um, and then arriving to what we want to do. So based on all that, uh, over the years we have built a couple of things. So one is we have a Microsoft and uh, uh, other solution based uh, execution platform. Uh, the execution platform includes best of breed solutions. Um, we have tried to have a very organic design uh, which includes some pieces from Microsoft EPM, some pieces from business process management system of Signavio using Google uh, for the DMS provider as a DMS provider, uh, then uh, using SAP which is our core and a lot of other solutions. So that's one execution management platform. It helps us to do orchestration at large across the breadth of the company, looking at all our complex projects and network services. Uh, then we have um, uh, seeded the concept of end-to-end -end integrated planning in our uh, connectivity solutions uh, group, which we also call as the product business, the optical product business. Um, we are uh, bringing in a lot of um, uh, procure-to-pay platforms uh, for integrating all our partners. Uh, then I would say that um, we have a lot of workflow automation and orchestration happening in the company. So the organization has grown so fast so soon that uh, we have uh, more than uh, 3,500 employees and um, we have to do mass orchestration of complex projects. So we have a workflow orchestrator. Um, that's what we came up with. We are using robotic process automation in a very different way. Uh, generally you would see companies using RPA for manpower intensive operations. We use it for um, reducing the human touch points, making the speed of execution very fast. Um, we also came up with our own organic Sterlite program management certification, which we call as SPMC. So most of the employees in the organization are SPMC certified, and that's because we need to get more organized as we grow and work. Um, so it's uh, again best of breed uh, taken from all the, not only uh, something like from PMP, but a uh, lot of what is relevant to Sterlite and in Sterlite. Um, then uh, there are some softer uh, innovations. We have fun innovations. We have a, a bot which wishes all the employees a personalized birthday wish. Uh, we have a, a tool called Fist Bump, which we developed recently, where you could give uh, kudos and dings to anybody on the organization. The intent is to break, break AR keys and uh, everybody gets uh, uh, a kind of a fist bump karma score at the end of the quarter. Uh, then we have some softer pieces like decision slots uh, for cross-functional decisions so that nobody in the organization has to wait for the leaders to get together to take decisions. 
Um, we have uh, open forums with the group CEO um, where um, everybody can book a slot of 15-20 minutes and just share their idea or do anything about that. Um, so these are just some of the very few uh, innovations we have embarked on in Sterlite and a lot more on our roadmap. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, um, transformation is relatively a very used and abused word. Uh, many people tend to always associate transformation with digital. My favorite is to call transformation as largely non-digital. Uh, the, the, the most, the, the biggest mistake the companies would do is to uh, buy tools and technologies and think that's what transformation is about and that's what you hear the consulting companies talking about. Um, I have a very personal view on this that transformation can be done to a limit by the consultants. Transformation is known and done internally. You have to have somebody internally who can talk to people on the floor with whom everybody is open and uh, who, where you actually realize the sentiment and the culture in the company. And um, so the first thing is to know the organization, know the people, understand the culture. In transformation, context is more important than content. So understanding that context is very important. Uh, then I would say that uh, start from first principles, write the charter, just don't do a copy paste of another organization, just don't uh, do what you read in a magazine. So start with the charter, uh, then you would want to um, uh, use some framework like industry framework like APQC or um, a SCORE model or something to basically um, uh, do a completion check of all the holes in the organization and you would that's what I would call as a heat map maybe which tells you what's broken in this organization and what matters most. Everything what's broken or seems broken may not be important. So doing a heat map analysis and then basically uh, converting that into a kind of uh, a roadmap uh, of uh, what should you do in the first year, what should you do in the second year and the third year. So you should always think about the end state three years out and then build in rather than starting from today what you want to do out because that keeps your mind straight and honest. Um, for every block you have there, there has to be something. So there has to be either a, you know, a efficiency gain, a dollar gain, or maybe it's a compliance thing or a foundational thing. So my favorite framework is to break every transformation journey into foundational blocks, scalable blocks, and um, you know, uh, moonshots. Uh, don't work on the moonshots and expect results if you have not fixed the foundation. For example, you would not want to work on data science without fixing master data management. That's one of my favorite examples. So that's what I would say that start on first principles, play simple, and always remember that uh, 70 to 80 percent of your transformation journey is going to be about culture. And most of the cultural shifts do not need technology. They need understanding, they need you know a consciousness of the culture in the organization and understanding always what works, what will work, what won't work. Uh, some are non-digital and some are digital um, and uh, believe you me that the tougher ones are the non-digital. Uh, most of the organizations today lay down the strategy, the goals and where they flunk is the execution of the strategy. So translation of strategy into goals uh, for everybody in the organization. Um, assigning the right bandwidth of people to the most important problems. Are your smartest, is your smartest talent working on the most important problem? So that whole strategy execution and strategy translation bit, uh, I would say is largely still an unsolved problem. And that needs an organic recipe because again, you can't copy paste everything. There are best practices. You could use OKRs, what Google uses. You could use, uh, you know, the balanced scorecard philosophy, but copy paste doesn't work. And everybody listening to this would be able to resound with what I'm trying to say. So. Some of these things are about non-techy things, but um, tracking what's working. Well, the agile working models, which work these days, uh, pod structure kind of teams, which might work in certain organizations, they may not work in some other. Um, translation of strategy into goals, into what it means to the last man on the ground. So th that's a non-digital space. And then of course, some things I talked earlier about, um, how do you break engagement uh, 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 walls in the organization, how do you make people talk to each other, how do you break AR keys, how do you have people in the organization, uh, the smart talent, give out their independent POV, the point of view, 
uh, without being scared, without being, uh, you know, uh, worrying about what will happen to them if, if they speak out their mind. So that's a non-digital space. A digital space, um, uh, well, I have a lot of interest in knowing uh, what's going on in the 3D printing world. We are trying to um, uh, use 3D printing for some of the things where um, industry is try trying to use it to both additive and subtractive manufacturing. Um, uh, I have a lot of interest in augmented reality, um, uh, especially since the time I attended one course in Singularity, which opened up my eyes. And recently I just saw this augmented reality thing where um, um, our people who go and sell products like optical products, they don't have to carry that mass of optical cables, they can just carry a few papers and they're able to create a, uh, a kind of a hologram uh, by just looking from a looking at an in from an iPad or something. So augmented reality for things like demand shaping, uh, then machine learning, which uh, I follow intensely, and we have seeded it big time in STL as well, reaping huge uh, rewards from that. Uh, basically, everything which is centered around on demand service serviceability of our customers. So the key is Anything which is helping you sell better and um, being able to con configure stuff um, at a short notice for your customers. Um, just not something because it's in the print, uh, something which is relevant to us. Um, and these are some of the things I uh, track pretty well. I am not yet a diva of transformation. I hope I will be one day and I'm planning to write a book on that, but my learnings have been organic, so that's what I would love to share. Uh, I would like to say that um, for all the people uh, who are uh, working on the transformation piece, um, please do work on first principles. Uh, keep the approach very simple and logical. Uh, work very closely with the talent in the organization and not only at the CXO level. Don't do transformation by sitting with four people in a room and expect results in the entire company. You have to work with the people. Um, uh, and like I shared earlier, start on the first principles of what you want to achieve. Why are you setting up that transformation function in the organization? And which are those three, four levers which will actually matter to you in your company? Because my belief is every organization has a different transformation recipe. For example, in STL, the transformation recipe we work on is about data, uh, talent, uh, technology and uh, you know the art of uh, changing the uh, culture amongst the people through a very high level uh, strategy execution piece. Um, I, in some organ organizations two of these things might be taken care of so something else might matter most. So work out a transformation recipe which is organic in the kitchen of your organization and work on first principles by having a charter, building a heat map, then coming on to a road map, um, don't work on the highest impact items until you fix the foundation. Uh, work closely with your leaders to make everybody believe that they have to have a non-negotiable focus on these foundational pieces because they may not reap rewards. So that's the toughest point where people break, where they would say that um, this is so obvious, but my CXO is, or CEO is not sponsoring, uh, sponsoring the, uh, the transformation block. So that change management bit is very important on how you show the impact and uh, then of course convert them into programs and follow it with some ruthless execution to show the results. So that's what I would have to say.